Last week I got an email from Ball that had this um, corn and cherry tomato salsa, so we decided to try making it. And uh, you know, there's a video about making it. And as always, first thing you do is start by getting out your jars and giving them all a really good washing. And uh, you make sure that you rinse them really good to get rid of all the soap because that would be a disaster in there. So um, you know, I'm just starting off by getting everything together. Now we don't really have cherry tomatoes this year. We do have those Principe tomatoes that I'm going to be using for the recipe. And there's the um, the water bath pot. I put some water in there. And actually, I bought some corn for this. Uh, we don't grow our own corn. And I had picked this up a couple days ago, so it looks a little bit old, but still was pretty good. Um, I wound up getting stuck doing the the pump, and I was going to do this a couple days ago. So you know, the corn sat around, but. It looks like it'll be all right. Um, so I got everything out there, and uh, those are the tomatoes. And uh, I changed some things around in here, and I'm um, using a Vidalia onion instead of a red onion. And I'm using natta pinos instead of jalapenos. And we wound up having to actually buy the uh, cilantro also because ours all went to seed. So I'm starting out by washing. These are some of the... Uh, Principe tomatoes and some of the little German lunchbox ones that I'm going to be using. Now we had a, uh, you know, a bunch. Of, we still have a bunch of them coming in, so uh, this is a good way to use them up. So the first thing to do is take and coarsely chop them. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of going through and chopping them up into quarters. Now this is a completely different salsa than the other one that we make, so um, I'm sure it's going to taste different. And there's the uh, five pounds of small tomatoes chopped up and then you actually need uh, two cups of corn kernels so I did buy uh, three ears of corn here for this so I'm just cutting trying to cut the tips off and not cut too deep on them and that should just give me about two cups to uh, you know to fulfill the recipe and uh, local corn has been really good so far this year I don't know how much longer we'll be having it for but um, you know, it's been real good. And then they called for a red onion. I actually like the flavor of the medallions better. Um, so, you know, you can use a red onion if you want. But I'm using the uh, medallion here. And it just called to uh, to chop some of that up finely. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing here. And probably these will be about the last of the medallions for the year, too. I, I really miss them when they're gone. I do cook a lot of them on the grill during the summer. And, um... You know, we've been really enjoying them. So I put together my two cups of uh, medallia there. Got it all chopped up and just throw that in the pot. This is a really simple, you know, one pot recipe. So it does go quick and it's fairly easy. Then we um, we grow these natta pinos we started growing this year, which are uh, jalapenos without heat. They're the same flavor, but they just don't have the heat. So I'm substituting these for the uh, jalapenos that it calls for. But if you like the uh, warmer salsa, you can, you know, go ahead and use the jalapenos. I'm just showing you how I, you know, modified this recipe and I'm using it now. So it's just, uh, you know, just a matter of mincing them up a little bit. And they go pretty quick and then just dump it in that same pot there. And that's uh, pretty much everything except for the cilantro. Now, we, we had to buy this cilantro, and we found it at Aldi's, uh, amazingly. And it, it looks like it was fresh picked. It really is nice cilantro. Um, you know, it's fairly fresh, and it it has really great smell and odor to it. And So, it uh, looks like it's going to work out good. I kind of, you know, usually hate buying stuff like this. But um, ours just turned into coriander, so it's too late to use it. All that's good for now is seeds for next year. I just mint some of that up there. And the kitchen's really starting to smell really good now with this uh, mixture in the pot here. Pretty amazing how good salsa smells. And then it called for lime juice. And you were supposed to use the bottled lime juice. But my wife said, no, we want to use these. She, she doesn't like the bottled lime juice. Um... I'm not sure of the acidity content of these. I know the bottle stuff is 5%. So, um, just so there's no argument, I'm using them. But I really, um, 
would recommend using the uh, bottled lime juice if you do make this. So it's just a matter of, uh, you know, I'm squeezing out, uh, I wound up taking a half a dozen limes to get my half cup. And actually I put a little bit extra in because I didn't know, you know, what the acidity of this is. And this is the only thing that's uh, in the recipe to give it the acid. So I, you know, I just uh, used that little lemon press and squeezed them all in there. I got, I got about five eighths of a cup out of them. So I'm just going to put that in there and, you know, a little bit of salt next and just using some pickling and canning salt there they call for. And I'll put a, I'll put a link to the recipe um, down below once I post a video. So now I'm just going to start mixing everything up in the pot. And you can see it's, um, it's really not that bad. It looks pretty good, like a nice little salsa. It has really um, a great aroma to it, so... Now I uh, I put it on the pot. You have to actually bring it to a boil. So I just started uh, by turning it on slowly, and you know I'm gonna stir it and mix it up every once in a while, and just uh, you know give it a while to start warming up so I don't burn anything. And while that's warming up, I've got the jars warming up also, and now it's time to uh, wash the lids. Now I said it was going to um, make six pints and I decided to do eight jars and uh, eight lids just to be ready in case you get more and in the end I actually wound up with exactly seven pints so um, it was good that I did an extra jar so these new lids you just have to uh, wash with hot water and soap and rinse them really good and you know no more boiling or anything so I got them cleaned up and you know in the meantime I've been stirring this uh trying to get this up to a boil and just you know mixing it all up good there you can see it's starting to get a lot of liquid cooking out of the tomatoes now and I you know I started turning up the heat a little bit more and there you can see it's just uh, basically almost up to the boil now so what you want to do is you want to bring this up to like a you know not a heavy boil just like a simmer and just let it uh, simmer for about 10 minutes before you start packing the jars with it there, it's almost almost um, ready to start the timer, and uh, right about there, it's uh, starting a 10-minute timer there. So um, now it's time to start getting the uh, the jars ready and everything ready to go. So you can see the jars have been steaming for a while now, and um, I'm just going to set them on the counter over there by the pot with the salsa in it. And, you know, as always, you have to be careful whenever you're dealing with the boiling water and, you know, trying to get it out of the jars and handle them in the steam and stuff there. And I have to tell you this, uh, I bought this new uh, jar picker up a couple of years ago and it's been junk. All the springs went out of it like the first year that I had it and it just keeps getting stiffer and stiffer every year. So I wouldn't recommend that one. Um, I know it was an expensive one, but it's uh, really junk. So now it's time to start filling up the jars. And um, as I said, I you know I did get eight jars out, not knowing exactly how much I was going to get, because usually you get a little bit extra out of these bowl recipes, and they uh, tell you. So I'm just going to go through and uh, fill the jars, basically. Up as high as I can. I'm down maybe about three quarters of an inch there, and then take the uh, little poker to get all the air out of it. And uh, then everything will settle down, and I'm just going to go back and bring them up to the half inch headspace. And it it actually turned out uh, just to be perfect. The uh, batch for seven. I I had maybe about a half an ounce left, and that was it. So um, yeah, there it is. There's just a drop left in the pot. And then I just take a damp paper towel and I go around the uh, the seal area there, the jar. Make sure there's nothing uh, nothing on there that could bother the seal. And then just take those uh, lids that I washed a little while ago and just slide them in place. And then next the uh, rings go on there. And I, uh, 
you know, I've actually had a lot of people ask me, well, how tight do you actually make these things? And what I do is I just start them all like this and just, um, you know, get them threaded down so that they're in place pretty much and no real pressure. Then I just go back and I'll um, rock the lid a little bit back and forth because sometimes they stick and just get them like fingertip tight. Not a lot of force, but, you know, just enough to, um, to just make sure that they're, you know, not going to be loose. And then it's time to put them in the uh, boiling water bath there. That's pretty much, you know, the standard with any, any boiling water bath process. Put them in and then make sure that you have an inch of water on top of the jars. And I actually was a little bit short on this one, so I had to put a couple cups of water in there to, to bring it up there. Then just put the lid on and bring it up to a boil. Once it's boiling, you can actually start the timer then. And this recipe called for 15 minutes for the uh, pint, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you know, leave it for 15 minutes. And when that's over, it's just a matter of um, turning off the uh, heat underneath the pot. And then I'm going to remove the cover, like they say, and just... I'm not in a hurry today, so I'm going to let it sit for a couple of minutes so everything starts to, you know, cool down a little bit and then just remove the jars and put them over on the rack and let them sit there for several hours to um, cool down. Now I didn't have any left over to try so I really don't know how the flavor is going to be on this or what until we open them in a couple weeks so um, you know I'll have to wait and but I think it's going to be good with all the ingredients that are in there. And then it's time to run in and make some labels and um, I got that Epson ink tank printer and that thing's been amazing for labels uh i printed out hundreds of labels and barely used any ink at all on it it's um you know it's just so economical ink wise compared to the old hp and then i got this um cameo 3 for the print and cut i use and print out the labels and then you just go back and load it in and it reads the registration points and you know then just cuts around the labels so you can remove them easily from the sheet. That's really been a help with all the canning jars and um, you know the Epson printer really makes it economical to use too. So got my labels all made up and time to just uh, put them on the jars before I put them down in the root cellar. Now I did wash, take the rings off, wash the jars and you know clean everything out good and then put the rings back on. So yeah, everything's ready to go into the, the root cellar once I get them labeled up here. And someday I'm going to have to make a, a tool to put these on to make it real quick and easy to do. But for now I just take a uh, X-Acto knife and kind of use that to help center them and get them in place before you push them down. So there they are, my uh, corn and cherry tomato salsa. Uh, a couple hours later, all done, ready to um, you know be put downstairs and enjoyed this winter. If you're looking for something to do with all those extra small cherry tomatoes, you know, this looks like a good recipe to use them up. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.